actually, I cut my opening story about SNCC and OAS because I'm trying to uh, hew to the time restraint. Sorry. Thank you for the opportunity to speak today. My larger project is to, as Adam said, weave the story of Arab American activism into the broader narrative about American civil rights and anti-imperialist activism in the 1960s and 1970s. In this paper, I examine activist Arab Americans' construction of a third world identity during that period by focusing on the organization of Arab students' activism on American college campuses. While recognizing the early 20th century precedent for Arab Americans' perception of solidarity with other colonized and oppressed peoples, I focus on the 1967 war's galvanizing impact on the politicization of many Arab and Arab American college students. Almost coincidentally, that war occurred in the midst of a pivotal moment in the radicalization of global liberation movements, from escalations of anti-war and black power movements in the United States, to Che Guevara's and the Vietnamese National Liberation Front's revolutionary activities in Latin America and Southeast Asia. In my research, I emphasize the ways that politically conscious Arab and Arab American students connected their advocacy of Palestinian resistance to the activist style and ideologies practiced by other global and American anti-imperialist and anti-racist struggles prominent in the New Left movement of the period. And this formulation of what's going on with the intersections in the U.S. paralleled the Palestinian Fedayeen group simultaneous forging of alliances with third world revolutionary groups in Cuba and China and so forth. I'm interested in how Arab and Arab American students translated Arab transnationalist politics into the American protest arena. And I examine their strategies to gain visibility, legitimacy, and support from other anti-imperialist, anti-racist Americans whom they imagined as natural allies. The organization of Arab students was formed in 1952, and it held its first convention that year in Ann Arbor, Michigan. The OAS was primarily a foreign student organization, and the vast majority of its members were temporarily in North America as college students. It is important to recognize, however, that some OAS students intended to remain in the U.S. and began to identify increasingly as Arab Americans while a few OAS students were from Arab American families. Thus, throughout this paper, when I refer to the Arab students of the OAS, I'm referencing a mixed composition of mostly Arab, along with a few Arab American students. And the confluence of these two groups in this student organization fostered the cross-fertilization of ideas and the production of a transnationalist Arab American identity, particularly in the after the 67 war. Focused on Arab world developments, the OAS developed close ties to and received funding from several Arab governments. As an explicitly political organization, its orientation was almost exclusively toward addressing Arab world problems by advocating a range of progressive solutions. By the mid-50s, the OAS developed the emblem one Arab nation to represent its overriding commitment to pan-Arab political unity and its support for Nasser. But the proceedings of the first convention in Ann Arbor emphasized that the primary crisis that the students sought to confront was the subjugation of Palestine, which OAS leaders declared was, quote, the most important single problem in the minds of Arabs everywhere, overshadowing any other problem. Active chapters of the OAS existed on most major American university campuses and served both social and political purposes. In the early 1960s, many of the OAS chapters across the country sponsored events to publicize the struggle for Algerian independence and to mark UAR Day and Palestine Day. 
As further expression of its political project, the OAS occasionally staged public protests at events boosting Israel. Thus, by 1967, the OAS already possessed about 15 years of political activism on behalf of Palestine and Arab nationalism in the U.S. Nevertheless, the June War proved a defining moment for OAS members, as it did for most Arabs throughout the diaspora. According to Hatem Husseini, who was a member of OAS at that time, the student organization reacted to the Arabs' defeat not with demoralization, but with heightened political radicalism. OAS members met for three intensive days in July 1967 and emerged with a set of detailed proposals for Arab political and economic action, which it dispatched to leaders of many Arab states. And I don't know what happened after that. This radicalization and sense of urgency closely matched and was influenced by the formation of the AAUG, which Sarah just spoke about, uh, later that year. Led by intellectuals and professionals such as Ibrahim Abu, Abu Lokad and Abdin Jabara, the AAUG fostered solidarities with non-Arab leftists in the U.S. and globally. Both the OAS and the AAUG shared a similar membership largely foreign-born, but inclusive of second and third generation Arab Americans, and principally intellectuals and professionals, or training to become so. Together, these two activist organizations were creating a transnational, activist, increasingly Arab American identity, built upon a leftist, non-sectarian political orientation that championed Palestinian revolution. In the late 60s and 70s, they often worked together to stage events on American campuses, with AAUG scholars usually serving as speakers at OAS teach-ins on Palestine. Even more consequential for the students' radicalization was the intensification of the Palestinian resistance movement. Support for the resistance was at the center of OAS's activism after 67, and out of the Fetiyin groups, the OAS most closely associated with al-Fatah, Fatah leaders sent frequent communications to OAS members in the U.S., some of which were disseminated in OAS literature, handed out on American college campuses. The identification with the Palestinian resistance continued to solidify with the arrival at U.S. universities of more Palestinian students who had been living in the environment of the struggle and who brought with them a nationalist political consciousness and a heightened criticism of Western powers. Although support for the Palestinian resistance was foremost for OAS activists, they were keenly aware of and invested in other revolutionary movements which were reaching a fever pitch in the late 60s. And the Arab students strategically situated their political cause among them. At its convention in 1967, held two months after the June War, the OAS's first set of resolutions declared its solidarity with African Americans, the National Liberation Front in Vietnam, and liberation movements in Africa before the students turned to their resolutions about Palestinian independence and Arab unity. The opening statement from the 1967 convention pronounced the students' mode of analysis. Quote, our battle is an inseparable part of the imperialist design being executed against the dynamic revolutionary forces in the third world. End quote. OAS campus activism promoting Palestine intensified after 1967. Over the next few years, OAS sponsored teach-ins and staged rallies at universities across the country and mobilized demonstrations at Arab embassies and at other venues hosting Israeli leaders. Collections of leaflets I've examined that were distributed by the OAS chapters on the campuses of the University of Michigan, University of Kansas, and the University of California, Berkeley, in the late 60s through the early 70s, demonstrate the forms of pro-Palestinian activities that the organization mm -hmm. undertook and the literature it disseminated. So here we have, on the second uh, anniversary of the June War, the Michigan OAS advertised a march and a rally uh, in support of the Palestinian people at the Diag, which is a campus gathering place. 
And throughout the year, additional flyers publicizing OAS teach-ins. Oh, no. Uh, speakers and films were produced at Michigan. I'm going to talk really fast. As mentioned earlier, the leaflets occasionally reproduced FATA and PLO statements, such as one handed out in the diag titled The Position of al Fata," and another shown here, The Struggle Goes On, which was adapted from a publication of the Beirut-based PLO Research Center. Most OAS literature used both rhetoric and imagery to promote the armed liberation struggle. For example, a flyer from 1969 featuring a sketch of hands holding rifles with bayonets invited the Michigan campus to a screening of a film about Palestinian commandos. Berkeley's Arab student group handed out a flyer in 1969 emblazoned with the catchphrase, the time of the gun, and featured images of guerrilla fighters. Another from the University of Kansas was titled, a national liberation struggle against Zionism and imperialism in the Middle East and depicted a Palestinian guerrilla holding a rifle. Now, the celebration of militant anti-imperialist struggle was characteristic of the activist style of the global and American New Left in this period. Numerous groups on American campuses were simultaneously producing literature idealizing Vietnamese, Latin American, African guerrillas with similar iconography of the AK-47 rifle as a symbol for insurgency. Tapping into this context, Arab student literature often posed parallels between the Palestinian freedom fighters and other third world revolutionaries in a strategy to gain broader support from non-Arab leftists in the U.S. For example, this leaflet handed out at Berkeley declared, Southeast Asian struggle for independence, Palestinian struggle for freedom, and GI struggle for liberty, and another handbill proclaimed, people of America do not allow another Cambodia in Jordan. Creating solidarity out of their shared dedication to anti-imperialist revolution, OAS chapters often partnered with campus organizations that represented third world students in oppositional politics. Um, for instance, at Berkeley, the Arab students showed the Battle of Algiers, which involved other groups on campus. Uh, it was followed by a film about the Palestinian Revolution, and their publicity material announced Algiers, Vietnam, Palestine, Angola, dig, come and relive the, Ber the battle. And Berkeley's Palestine Week teach-ins and rallies featured speakers from, you can see at the bottom, sorry, obnoxious um, the Black Students' Union, Iranian Students' Association, SDS, the Young Socialist Alliance, and the Progressive Labor Party. Uh, do I have time to talk about my last group? Yeah. Wayne State's OAS? Okay, I'll, I'll try to be brief. One of the most active OAS chapters in the late 60s was at Wayne State University in Detroit. Exemplifying the activist style of the OAS, the chapter at Wayne showcased the alliances that the organization cultivated with other leftist groups on college campuses. Like other chapters, Wayne's OAS stepped up its rallies and teach-ins on campus and throughout the city in the few years following the 67 war. In this period, the students acquired a building on Cass Avenue near campus. It was called the Arab Club, and that was the hub of activity. Now, although I do not have precise membership data from multiple OAS chapters in order to make this comparison, I suspect that the OAS at Wayne State, located as it was in the city with the largest working class and Muslim Arab American population, was distinctive for involving more Arab American students, such as Nabil Abraham, and closer ties to the Arab American community than did other OAS chapters throughout the country. Uh, the political and cultural environment at Wayne State fostered the Arab student activist intersections with other political activists. Several leaders of Wayne's OAS in this period, principally Nabil Abraham, Hassan Nawash, and George Curry, were active in other New Left causes and joined with many other students to protest against racism and against the war in Vietnam during a constant swirl of rallies and demonstrations on and near campus in Detroit. In this way, these Arab and Arab American students made connections with non-Arab activists, making common cause over both shared ideology and practices of protest and consciousness raising. 
The OAS's alliance with the radical network on campus was especially evident in the support the Arab students received from the student newspaper. The newspaper, called the South End, was run by students who were instrumental in the black nationalist revolutionary union movement, the best known of which was DRUM, the Dodge Revolutionary Union Movement, which then became organized as the League of Revolutionary Black Workers. And under the editorship of League leaders, the student newspaper at Wayne State promoted black nationalism and other revolutionary causes. Sympathetic to the Palestinian resistance, the editors gave the OAS frequent space. For example, in 1968, the paper ran a long interview with Hassan Nawash about the Palestinian resistance. I don't have photos of the ones I'm talking about. These are photos of other articles. Um, and in 1969, the paper printed Nabil Abraham's guest editorial about the links between Fatah and liberation struggles throughout the Third World. Furthermore, the newspaper and associated radical student groups on, at Wayne co-sponsored OAS rallies against appearances in Detroit of Israeli leaders. Okay, now I'll go to my conclusion. Which is brief. In conclusion, the politically active students in the OAS borrowed discourse and tactics from American black and new left activists at the same time as the American black and new left movements that were anchored on many American campuses were becoming progressively oriented toward third world struggles. So this convergence created a fertile space for Arab American pro-Palestinian advocacy in American activist networks in the late 60s. The intersections among these leftist groups also provoked increased surveillance and repression by American authorities. Nevertheless, the relationships among Arab American activists and other leftist groups continued to grow over the next decade, and by the mid-1980s, these relationships were one factor that contributed to the increasing support shown by more liberal, as opposed to militantly left, Americans, especially liberal African American leaders for the Palestinian position. Thank you.